Hello friends. Today in this session, we will discuss fatigue parameter for performance grading of spot binders. That is also called G star into sin delta. And this is to determine the lower temperature of a PG grade system minus 10. For example, in case of PG 76 minus 10, how to determine this lowest temperature? You know, the central theme of the super pave binder specification is its reliance on testing asphalt binders in conditions that simulate the three critical stages during the binder's life. The test performed on the original asphalt represent the first stage of transport, storage and handling. The second stage represents the asphalt during mixed production and construction and it is simulated by aging the binder in a rolling thin film oven and the thin film oven test exposes thin binder films to heat and air and approximates the aging of asphalt during mixing and construction and this binder after short term aging is used to determine maximum temperature of PG system and I have explained this in detail in my earlier video. The third stage occurs as the binder ages over a long period of time as part of the hot mix asphalt pavement layer. And this stage is simulated for the specification by the pressure aging vessel, PAV. The procedure exposes binder samples to heat and pressure in order to simulate years of in-service aging in a pavement. And as a part of SHRP specification, Various equipments and procedures were developed for the purpose of characterizing bitumen after long term service in field. Rolling thin film oven test coupled with pressure aging vessel is to simulate aging of the binder during service life of the pavement. Dynamic shear rheometer was developed to estimate binder's low temperature G star into sin delta and this value should be less than 5000 kPa and that is also called a fatigue parameter. Bending beam rheometer is a simple test which measures deflection in a beam of bitumen under constant load and two parameters are determined in this test, the creep stiffness and creep rate. Unfortunately, BBR is not able to fully characterize the ability of some binders to stretch before failure and therefore direct tension test measures ultimate tensile strength of a bitumen at low temperature and that can be up to minus 30 degrees centigrade. PAV or pressure aging vessel is used for long term aging of binder. It simulates on field aging conditions that is after compaction and the layer is open to traffic. PAV conditioning is used for determination of low temperature performance of the binder and when the PAV aged binder is tested in DSR dynamic shear rheometer, then we determine a parameter G star into sin delta and that is called the fatigue parameter. And the maximum permissible limit of this fatigue parameter is 5000 kPa. So temperature at which you get a value less than 5000 kPa, that is the intermediate temperature. Significance of this test is that it simulates 5 to 10 years of in-service aging of the binder. There are two parameters. Complex modulus and phase angle. Complex modulus that is G star indicates stiffness in the binder whereas phase angle delta indicates viscoelastic property of the binder. And as I told you the fatigue parameter is G star into sin delta. So how this G star into sin delta is important? If you look at the DSR, the bitumen sample is placed between two plates. Lower plate is fixed and the upper plate oscillates at some speed, generally 10 radian per second. And this plate oscillates 90 degree. So one oscillation basically means that the plate will move from A to B, coming back to A and then moves to C and then again comes back to A. That is the one oscillation. And in this oscillation, how much energy is dissipated? That is the basic theory for calculating G star into sine delta. Amount of energy dissipated by the binder in one cycle can be computed using this equation that the delta U is equal to integration of rho into D epsilon where rho is the stress 
and epsilon is the strain. And if you take this integration from 0 to 2 pi by omega, then the, you get the dissipated energy. And this equation becomes that the delta u is equal to sigma 0 into epsilon 0 into sin delta into pi. Now, this g star or complex modulus is given by stress upon strain. So, if you substitute the value of st stress here in this equation equal to g star into epsilon 0, then this dissipated energy becomes epsilon square into g star sin delta into pi. Now, lower the dissipated energy, lower will be the deformation in the binder. And therefore, a lower value of g star sin delta is needed for high fatigue resistance. And that is how g star into sin delta is limited to 5000 kPa. Apparatus, you need a pressure edging vessel which is designed to operate at 2.1 MPa between 90 and 110 degrees centigrade and it can hold 10 TFOT pens with pen holders. They can be stacked here like this. A pressure release valve that prevents pressure in the vessel from exceeding 2.1 MPa during the aging procedure. A temperature control device for maintaining the temperature during the aging procedure at all points within the pressure vessel at the aging temperature and a digital proportional controller for maintaining the specified temperature control. Stainless steel pens which are 10 TFOT pens, a balance, a vacuum oven which is capable of maintaining a temperature up to 180 degrees centigrade and a vacuum system which is capable of generating and maintaining pressure below 15 kPa absolute. For preparing the sample for PAV, we take RTFO aged binder that is short term aged material, preheat the pressure edging vessel, test temperature for PAV can be 90 degree to 110 degree centigrade depending upon the climatic conditions. Take 50 gram of RTFO aged sample in a TFOT pan and this amount will lead approximately a 3.2 millimeter thick film of asphalt binder. Then place the filled pans in the pan holder and place the pan holder with filled pans inside the pressure edging vessel and close the vessel. Maintain the temperature and air pressure at 2.1 MPa inside the pressure vessel for 20 hours plus minus 10 minutes and then we depressurize the vessel gradually over a 9 minute period to avoid bubbling. After that you scrap and collect the aged material in a container and this should be done carefully then you keep this sample in a vacuum chamber for degassing at a temperature of 170 degree centigrade for 30 minutes. And now the sample is ready for further test in either dynamic shear geometer or bending beam geometer or direct tension test. PAV residue is tested at lower temperature, but these lower temperatures are significantly above the low temperature specification for a given PG binder and that is why when you test the specimen under DSR it is called intermediate temperature because binders lower temperature make the specimen quite stiff and it will result in a very small value of phase angle delta and that is the reason that a thicker sample of a smaller diameter is used so that delta is measurable. Thickness of a specimen is 2 mm and diameter is 8 mm. Whereas when you test the binder at temperature above 46 degrees centigrade, we use 1 mm thick specimen and 25 mm diameter. And let us now go to the DSR lab for testing of this specimen. So heat the binder 
to the cooling temperature and prepare the specimen in the mold and as I told you the mold here is of 2 millimeter thickness and 8 millimeter diameter. Then you place this mold between the two plates of the DSR and move the test plate together until the gap between the plates is equal to the test gap. After that, you trim the specimen around the edge of the test. Trim the specimen around the edge of the test plates using a heated trimming tool and here you should remember that G star is proportional to the fourth power of the asphalt binder specimen radius and therefore careful trimming is necessary to ensure reliable measurement. Then that is how the loaded sample looks like. Now select the test temperature according to the binder grade or the climatic conditions through the software and here it shows you the time required to reach the temperature a 37 degree centigrade which we have which we have taken in this test. This you can also see on the screen of the DSR that the temperature has now reached 37 degree centigrade. At the end of the test the final report is generated in this format. Here you have the measurement data the cycle number, time, temperature 37 degree centigrade, frequency 10, strain and you get the modulus value and delta value. And it also gives you the summary of the calculations and here you can see that the mean complex shear modulus G star is 1296.97 kPa and mean value of delta is 52 degree centigrade. It also gives you G star sine delta that is 1021.7384 kPa. Now if this value is less than the limiting value 5000 kPa then the test is stopped otherwise the software will automatically change the temperature till this value of G star sine delta is less than 5000 kPa. Now this test under DSR is more of a verification test rather than determining the lower temperature of PG grade. I told you this is done at intermediate test temperature because at lower temperature the value of delta will be very low not measurable and if you know the grade of the binder let us say the grade of the binder is PG 76 minus 10 then this verification test is conducted at the mean temperature 76 minus 10 by 2 plus 4 that is 37 degree centigrade. And if G star sine delta at this temperature is less than 5000 kPa, then this grade of the binder is verified. But if you want to know the lower temperature that is minus 10 degree centigrade, then we should go for bending beam rheometer test. This test is used to determine lower PG temperature using flexural creep stiffness parameter. Here BVR test is conducted on a beam casted from PAV age sample and the size of the beam is 6.25 millimeter into 12.5 millimeter into 127 millimeter dimension. The, the temperature range for BBR is 0 to minus 36 degree centigrade and for preparing the specimen you put the sample in the guided mold as per ASTO T313 cool the material at minus 5 degree centigrade for 5 to 10 minutes and then condition the sample at test temperature for 60 minutes. The contact load is 35 millinewton and then you apply a seating load of 980 millinewton for 1 second and recovery for 20 seconds at back load of 35 millinewton. Then a load of 980 millinewton is applied for 
240 seconds to the center of the beam and its deflection is measured against time and then its stiffness is calculated based on the measured deflection and standard beam dimensions and a measure of how the asphalt band relaxes the load induced stresses is also measured. The deflection of the beam is recorded during this period of 240 seconds as shown here in this figure and we determine the deflection at 60 second loading time. The classical beam theory is used to calculate creep stiffness at time t where p is the applied constant load that is 100 grams or 90 millinewton. L is the distance between beam supports that is 102 millimeter. B is the beam width 12.5 millimeter. H is the beam thickness 6.25 millimeter. And delta T here is a deflection at time T is equal to 60 second. And what super -pay specification suggests that this creep stiffness should be less than 300 MPa. The second parameter obtained by the BBR is the M value. And this M value indicates the rate of change of stiffness with loading time as shown here. In other words, the M value is the slope of the low creep stiffness versus low time curve at any time t. Now here also the time selected is 60 second. So you determine the slope of this curve at t is equal to 60 second. You draw a tangent here, determine the slope. This calculation is also done by BBR software and the super pave specifications require M value at 60 seconds should be greater than or equal to 0 0.3. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write a suggestion in the comment box.